every single art commissions platform sucks. They're not made for artists. They're made by businessmen that want to scrape money off of artists. They're not going to help you long term, and that's a problem for you. Welcome to the Iron Mentor. My name is Sean, and today I'm going to expose every single flaw that exists in every single freelancing site. I know that there's a better way that this could be done, and I want to explore how this would look if our commission platforms actually cared because they could do better and so could you now you just got on a new platform maybe you're going on to artist tree maybe you're setting up your deviantart chart maybe you're just setting up your account on fiverr right and uh however though all of that is gonna lead to inevitably the genesis of failure for yourself and so many artists and it has to start right here because let me ask you this what is actually shown to you that sets you up for success to get you clients where are all the hot tips and tricks for everybody on what to do and what's actually working for people other than just slashing your prices down so low that somebody might actually buy it from you what if art platforms actually showed you what not to do too why is there no sense of decorum have you ever noticed this every single freelancing platform has absolutely no sense of guidance or decorum all they do is they just set you up here's your account there's your product there's your pricing and boom good luck wipe my hands of you what this sets up is they're kind of just like abandoning you kind of like lord of the flies just like hey everybody just go ahead and see what happens here this sets up this kind of wild west lawlessness where everybody just does something and kind of hope it works for them but instead what if art platforms first off started by showing you what's actually working for people what if they give you hot tips and tricks on things that you can do rather than just be a stupidly cheap artist what if they actually showed you how people are setting up their pages how they're organizing it and what actually works for them people that by the way are not sponsored by them that aren't paid by them that aren't endorsed by them they're just users that are actually being consistent and getting respectable wages wouldn't that be lovely for you to actually know hey do this and don't do this but instead they don't all they do is they just toss you in the water and then watch you drown while they collect a couple bucks you ever notice that now i take no pleasure at all in saying this but i need to ask you how can i guarantee that if you commit to using any art commission platform any freelancing platform whatsoever that you are going to fail within the first two years i don't like that statistic because the average freelancing artist only makes it about two years did you know that by the way because that's a fact so why does this happen well you might say that the market is too competitive have you ever heard that one before oh god that's a good gem isn't it so let's take a look at the market generally when you take a look at any website doesn't matter which one just go ahead and pick one go ahead and pick artists and clients go ahead and look at artistry go ahead and look at fiverr go ahead and look at upwork what is the standard oh right that's right there's none there's none there's no standard for anything that anybody should be pricing at. You can come in with bomb skills and set yourself up for $15 freelancing work and somehow that makes it fair? That's gonna set you up for success? That is gonna be how you're gonna grow in art business? I mean, come on, what are you thinking? That's not gonna do anything for you. Y'all, I've said it before and I'll say it again right now, but if you are seeking less than a certain amount of commissions, you're not even looking for money. You're just looking for validation. And not that there's anything wrong with wanting that, but that's just not long-term sustainable for you. So follow me. What if they did this? What if freelancing platforms, what if our commission platforms and shops on current platforms right now, they're very popular. What if they establish a minimum pricing? Wouldn't that be great? I have a big gripe against Artisan Tree for this one because as you can see right here, they actually encourage artists to do at least $10 an hour. But in my video, I exclusively did on Artist Tree, which you can find down below linked after you're done with this one, you will find that 99% of artists are not even close to charging that. At most, they're making one or two bucks an hour. And that is just unacceptable. What's worse? is that when you have platforms that are flooded with really cheap artists, then what this does is it just creates a sea of cutthroats 
and cheapos that you trying to bust in and actually get what you deserve, which by the way, you can, and I promote how to do it all over my channel, then you're just not gonna make it. Why? Because why would a client pay hundreds of dollars for your work when they can get it from somebody who doesn't respect themselves and doesn't see their value and doesn't see their potential as much as you do. They just set you up for failure. It's not fair. And that's why freelancing platforms are not able to support what you want to do long term. And by the way, it doesn't matter where you live, friend. It doesn't matter where in the world you are. There is a global standard. So if one platform, just one of them, were to say, this is it, this is the standard, it would make a world of difference to us all. Literally, wouldn't it? Now, why do you think that once you get into these platforms, that your art is probably guaranteed to never be seen? How do you actually increase your exposure? Again, most of the time, what do you got to do? You got to slash your prices. You got to offer bulk discounts or you have to offer a sale, a flash sale. Here's a holiday sale, right? What if there is a way for you to actually get your art seen? So let's say, for example, that you were to go ahead and you made realistic cyberpunk work, okay? Unfortunately, when somebody searches that in, what they're going to get is both cyberpunk and realism not them together. They're going to get a lot of irrelevant examples. Let's look at this another way. Let's say that you did anime styled D and D commissions. Okay. They're going to get both D and D genre artwork and anime artwork. And most of them aren't even going to be relevant. So what if there was a better way for you to actually categorize their work? Because yes, even though a lot of freelancing platforms have a way for you to have some type of categorization, it's really not that robust. So a client that's looking for a specific genre and a specific style cannot find the perfect artist like you who's actually able to offer that. The best way that I can think of how this worked great in the past, and it wasn't quite on an exclusive freelancing site, but if y'all remember old DeviantArt pre-Eclipse, it had a category system just like this where you had style and genre. So if an art commission platform really cared about trying to get you maximum exposure and get clients to find exactly what they wanted to, this is how they would do it. They would separate out into, here's my style, here's my genre. It's semi-realism, anime, realism, stylized, chibi, etc. And then what is the genre of it? And then they can just keep adding to it. So wouldn't that be so great for you? Because there are so many of you that have such great ideas and great niches, but people aren't finding you on these platforms because they're not setting you up for the success on it. What that does from a client perspective is just keep showing them loads and loads of irrelevant examples until maybe somebody actually fits what they're looking for or hey they just give up and then they go somewhere else or worse maybe they run to ai art to try and do it that sucks too for you doesn't it friend but if they just categorize everything it would help keep you from being invisible wouldn't it now can we talk about what is the most predatory practice of all these sites and why they really exist y'all because they're not really meant and nor are they set out to help artists. They're meant to make a buck. So why don't art commission platforms, why don't freelancing platforms implement the changes that I'm suggesting? Well, because to be honest and real with you, they only care to the amount that they can monetize it. They only care to the amount of people who they think and through market analysis, th they think unknowingly because guess what? They're not freelancers and they're not artists and they're also not art clients either. They are just taking a stab at what will bring them a big buck. What's going to help them meet their quota and meet their deadlines, okay? So what that typically leads to now is, have you noticed how so many platforms take money from an artist? For example, you see this on DeviantArt. You see this on Artisan Clients. You'll see this on Fiverr. You'll see this on every single big platform. And now you also have Artistry coming into the mix that says, <laughs> Well, no artists, we're gonna, we're gonna protect you by screwing over your client and making them pay more, which in fact makes them pay less. If you knew you had to pay more, come on, you wouldn't pay more off the top. No friend, you would get somebody cheaper to start and then you'd be okay with it. So they're not actually attracting that right person to you. And that's all because what their main business plan is, is just to scrape a little bit off the top of you. These platforms do not make the bulk of their money from big ticket commissions or big ticket freelance jobs. No friend, what they do is they scrape a little bit away from a ton of really cheap works. 
They'd rather get a buck off of somebody who's selling their work for $15 than to get $20 off of somebody who's selling their work for over 100. That's not right. What if instead that they solely focused on monetizing different ways? Like for example, ads. I think ads would be terrific. Ads would be easy, not like as annoying as like when y'all watch anime, you know what I'm talking about? When there's like loads of ads flying at you all the time, that's obnoxious, but they could just focus on ad revenue. They could focus on doing it other ways. That would be okay. That would be relevant to both artists and to our consumers and our clients. Wouldn't that be so much better than you having to worry about how much math you have to do to try and get what you actually want or for the client to worry about how much am I going to pay after this? It's just stupid. Stop taking money from artists and in fact, learn how to actually make a buck. It would be so much better. Have you ever noticed how every art freelancing platform is overly swamped with artists? Everywhere you look, it seems like all you have there are strictly the artists. And then where the heck is everybody else? Where are the clients? Especially where are the big ticket clients, right? What this inevitably leads to is a whole bunch of desperation tactics. And that's what it's honestly set up for. And I'm sad to say that, but it's the honest truth on that one. What this typically, I mean, if I were to put this into a scenario, it's kind of like you have a group of 10 guys and there's one pretty girl and they're all trying to fight each other over who's gonna get her. It's really sad and pathetic. And I don't like to see that because what that leads to is a lot of cutthroat tactics that will not make you feel good, make you feel successful, and they definitely won't bring you a lot of profit long-term either. In fact, what it's gonna do is make you feel burnt out, dejected, and it's gonna make you feel anxious and worthless. So instead of that, what if these platforms actually, I don't know, attracted clients? What if they actually made them so that they were more accessible? Like I've been talking about in this video and I've got other suggestions on how to do this. Here's another really good thing too. What if they vetted them? What if they actually vetted everybody on there? So that then that way you actually get serious clients. Wouldn't that be great? What if you could actually vet them by seeking to kind of separate them out into what type of payments that they like? Or by when they sign up as a client, then they also have to provide some form of payment. Then this way, they also scare away all the scammers. Wouldn't you love that? But no friend, every single platform is flooded with these people and flooded with too many artists. And it's creating a red ocean effect that's just not healthy. All right, now I got to talk to you about something that's recently come to light and recently come to my attention and I'm really not okay with it and I don't think you should be either. Now, do you live outside the US or Europe? Because if so, please listen up and for people in those countries, please listen up as well because this is a really nasty, heinous thing that I'm starting to take notice of. So one seemingly good perk, quote unquote, that's attracting a lot of non-US and non-European artists to platforms, especially like artistry, is that they can go on and use it and they don't have to take any type of pay cut similar to PayPal does. This all seems great, but it's actually a really nasty system because what happens to these poor artists is that they literally have no other option because their government set it up like that because there is no other type of payment allowed into their country. And inevitably what happens here is that these artists on these platforms like artistry, for example, is that they are imprisoned and shackled to only doing cheap work. There's no upward growth. There's no upward trajectory in what they're able to do. They're not able to expand because their country does not allow it. And what I see this as, this is a highly predatory practice and it's just not right. So why don't more art commission platforms take more diverse payment types? Why can't they take PayPal, Venmo, Square, Stripe, and then, oh, I don't know, how about credit cards? Like, why can't I go to a farmer's market this weekend and give my credit card to just Joe Schmo the farmer and I can get some eggplant from him, but I can't do it when I'm trying to conduct my business online. That just doesn't make sense. Now on all these freelancing platforms, you ever notice who's highlighted, who gets bumped up in their algorithm and who gets featured? Y'all ever see this before? Uh, because it's really not a good thing and it's definitely not helping you out, friend. So I recently went over this in my artistry video against it. And I've also noticed this as well on artists and clients. I've noticed this on tons of other freelancing platforms. But I just wanna ask you this, who's getting highlighted and why? 
Well, when you really take a look at it, it's always going to be the cheapest and trendiest, which also happens to also be the cheapest when I say trendiest. So you, you kind of notice this trend going here, pun intended. You all got to see that every single platform, again, they're not focused on getting you top dollar and then getting more because they're selling top dollar. No friend, they're trying to get a lot of really cheap artworks and take and scrape a little bit off the top. And I just want to ask you this, how are you able to actually grow your price? How are you encouraged to be actually competitive when you're in fact encouraged to stay low, to stay down? Why? Because they know that there's going to be 20 other people like you signing up for that same platform that very same day. They don't care about the longevity of your stay on that platform because they know that they're going to get some other poor soul that's going to do the same exact thing and fall into the same exact traps as you did. So what would work here? Here's my suggestion. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they only highlighted new artists? Artists that haven't gotten commissions in a while and those that have really great customer service return rates. Wouldn't that be awesome? Like, wouldn't it be great if you as a new artist, I don't know, actually have a chance on these platforms? Wouldn't it be great if you, who maybe hasn't gotten a commission in two or three months, had a special feature spot right there? They could put them all together. Wouldn't that be great? Maybe you get found that way. And those of you that have a really robust, sustainable business, then that way you could actually get bumped up a little bit over all the people that are charging a 10th of what you do because right now that's not the landscape of it and they're not encouraging you to do that. It could be just as simple as a random open for commissions. I don't even have to say that you haven't gotten them in any while, but what this would overall do is bring equality to these platforms, wouldn't it? Now there's one major critical component that's missing from every single freelancing site. And it's simply that there's no upper growth in trajectory. If you've never heard this from me before, I wanna be the first one to tell you because I don't think there's anybody on YouTube or anybody out there on the internet that says this other than me, but you being a commission artist is not the end goal. It is a means to an end. And that typically leads to you getting commercial jobs and getting really big jobs. But every single platform is solely focused on you just getting one freelance job at a time. And especially if you're in commissions, there's no way you're ever going to meet commercial clients on any of those platforms. Like just being real, like you're never going to see a riot concept artist gig posted on artisan tree or artisan clients or the DeviantArt uh, commission shop. Like that's never going to happen. So what they need to do is actually attract commercial clients. And the way that I would base this out is that first off, there should be three categories. It should be small, those would be independent people like think authors, medium-sized ones, these would be your medium-sized businesses, and then also large ones too. Then it would also establish a way for artists to see where they need to grow to and where they need to go to and set some standards. I would also say too that there should be separate minimum pricing for all of those categories. Then that way you can get excited and you can see that there is potential, that there are possibilities. And again, you can see that a platform freaking cares. Wouldn't that be awesome? But right now there's none of that. It's either commercial jobs or it's independent freelance clients. And you gotta really search and implement the things that I teach you on my channel on how to actually fish out the ones that are really great clients for you, which by the way, there's still plenty of them. So don't go thinking that it's scarcity, but scarcity is actually what all these platforms rely on. Have you ever noticed that? Cause it's pretty sad. Now, when you set up your account on any website, doesn't matter if it's a DVD art commission job or artists and clients page or your artistry page, your Fiverr account, your Upwork account, okay? Have you ever noticed how excessively detailed they wanna make every single nook and cranny? It's like you gotta be able to price down everything up into the freaking eye color of a character. Why do they do it like that? Why do art platforms make everything seem so reductive and transactional? But listen, if you're an artist, you know this, don't you? That no two artworks are the same. That no two clients are the same. That no two jobs are the same. But what all these do is they force us to try and reduce down to this just being a simple transactional process. So then what if this happened? What if instead these platforms allowed you to post some work, maybe post a range that I think that would be more than fair. And then you could encourage discussion. Now, what I really take issue with is when that discussion is solely limited to being on platform with them. They could do this, it's really simple, just encourage DM conversations, but also have some links to some other outside DM platforms, like Discord, for example. Pretty much everybody uses Discord nowadays that's in the commission space. So that would be another really great place for artists and clients to be encouraged to go and talk and also 
be encouraged to have clients reach out to artists and artists reach out to clients both ways, so long as it's acceptable. So what if this happened? What if a client had a job posting, an artist they find looks good, and then they're able to go ahead and through some type of really easy system where they both consent to it, then they could start to chat about it. And then they could agree upon the price. It'd be so awesome, it'd be so simple, and it would make life so much better for artists because they would get to know, hey, is this client a scumbag? Do they Are they really rough to work with? Do they suck? And it would also allow the client to figure out that about the artist. Because if you two are not in any type of conversation, not having any type of dialogue, you don't know anything about each other. You're like people get married on the first date. It's just not gonna work out well, and it's gonna go down in flames. Now, my big focus for you is the longevity of your efforts. Now, what would help the longevity of users on any platform, new existing or old too, it would be the fact that you have to understand you can't do this alone. You have to be able to talk to people in that space. But where is that space? Where's the space that you can actually go and talk to people and talk to clients and get feedback about what you are doing and also what you're not doing? Well, there simply isn't, my friend. And when you take a look at the communities that do have this, I just gotta be honest with you. If y'all ever actually have the opportunity to see what the artistry community is doing and what they say, yeah, they're really great and supportive, but I'm just gonna be real. It's like a pack of two-legged dogs trying to race and there are, nobody really knows what they're doing. It's the blind leading the blind. You can't have a whole bunch of noobs rushing onto a platform thinking that they know what works well for them or they're using really bad tactics that are working for them, that's even worse. And then they're promoting those bad practices further. Y'all, this is just tainting the pool. We can't do this, y'all. Look, I'm not trying to put down anybody that's in the artistry community, but I'm just gonna let you know, friend, that this is inevitably gonna crumble, that it's setting you up for failure, that it's not gonna support your long-term efforts. Because when you don't have actual knowledgeable people promoting things that actually do work, inevitably, what it's promoting is an adversarial type of environment where people are not genuinely trying to help each other, but instead they're just trying to adapt to things that other people are doing and steal and siphon what has worked for them. And that is because the platform has set them up to do this, to see each other as more enemies than as fellow artists. There needs to be a better space where artists can actually talk to artists, especially artists with upward trajectories, like I'm suggesting, where they can actually get good tips, where they can get those do's and don'ts. But platforms, they would rather have artists see each other as rivals and as adversaries because that's better for them. Because when there's a lot of people priced down low, then they get maximum profit because they know that there's a big market for cheap clients and that's not gonna set you up for success. But what if there was an actual real community? It would be so good for you short-term and long-term. Now, it would be great if there was a platform that actually executed on everything I've talked to you about today, but just to be real, there absolutely isn't, and that's what sucks. And that's why you gotta start to implement, starting right now, actual procedures that work to get better clients, and more money, and more upward trajectory friend, so that you can have an artistic future that you deserve. And I made a whole video about it right here, whole masterclass on how to do this, and it doesn't require a following. Go check it out.